What's up, guys? So this is what we're gonna be doing: some pre-thoughts, pre-first impressions on uh, Dead by Daylight's upcoming patch, The Last Breath. It takes place in the asylum, featuring the new killer, the nurse, and the the new survivor, Nia. So first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, the map. Forested again, uh, looks like with a major building, the asylum in the middle. Hopefully, not too many infinites. I'm sure that people will come across them as you know time goes by and accidentally find them. And there's a bunch of uh, cemented walls inside that it looks like we're able to jump in and out of. Lots of brick barricades, like in Macmillan Estate maps. Now hopefully the, the new infinites that people have found, looks like they're going to be counterable by the nurse. Uh, her being able to blink through walls. We're not sure if you're able to actually pick your own distance to blink, but it seems as if so, if you gauge the distance correctly, you'll be able to cut them off in uh, more ways than one on a bunch of these infinites that most people complain about. Personally, it doesn't bother me, it's in the game. Hey, my opinion. The map itself looks appealing. It's new scenery, new environment. We can find all the nicks and knacks through playing it, like we have the, uh, the original three settings for the last couple of months. Now into the nurse, her um, perk, a nurse's calling, uh, to be able to see when people are healing or being healed is incredibly viable. This is somewhat like Deerstalker, but in the sense that I'm, I'm sure that it will be 12, 24, 36 meters, just like Deerstalker, but instead of having to actually monitor them just being down and where they are, now as soon as they're actually being healed, or if you have a survivor that's just injured, you know, injured state, uh, still running but bleeding, you know, now we have the best of both worlds here. Now it's not only just people that are down, but we have people that are actually standing up. So if you're committing to a kill and say you're not running Shadowborn, your FOV is very small, you know, we've got, you know, some thick mist, some dark moonlight, you hit them once and they happen to get away. And if you try to stay in their general vicinity, you follow the red track marks, chances are you're going to find them if they're going to try and heal, even for just a moment. That red ore is going to pop up and you're going to get a keen uh, idea of where they are. So I'm really looking forward to that. The bone saw is scary as fuck. Let's be real. That thing looks dirty. I can't wait to see what the memento looks like from that bitch. That's going to be haggard as hell. So thanatophobia, nurse's second perk, is so that whenever you are injured, dying, or hooked, as it explains in the trailer, your speeds for sabotaging, healing, and repairing generators is going to be slowed down. For the sake that the killers that do body camp, that, you know, hey, they stand right in front of the person they're hooked and you're not saving them, this really isn't going to benefit them that much. For the killers that it, like play like myself, that will hit a person, continue to chase them and commit to the kill, put them on the hook, and then leave them to be saved, well, now they've not only got some points for their self, it's also now going to cripple that survivor. They're going to be much slower at everything else. Whether this means if you injure them, the percentage is mildly slower. If you hook them, it's much slower. How I see this being used in my case, how I would use it, playing nurse, is trying to chase multiple people, not really committing to camping hook kills. See a person, hit them. See, you know, you see another person trying to intervene, hit them as well. This then slows down the survivor process for them to be being able to escape, being able to heal each other, stabbing your hooks, so that then you may not have the staple iron grasp, maybe, you know, in your arsenal of perks. If you're able to injure them all very quickly, then maybe the sabs people will be much slower to where you're able to patrol and blink around the map much faster. We, we're just going to have to see where the speed lies uh, that decreases the percentage but for now i would rate that perk fairly decent it's just really going to depend on the actual numbers that are actually decrease the percentage but if you play killer like i play killer you don't camp hooks you commit to kills hook them and leave hey this is going to be perfect for you because you're going to be able to find more people and land more single hits rather than just camping camping your one kill the strider perk on the nurse i don't know how i really feel about it it's, it's a, a counter to uh, Iron Will and, I guess, people hiding in closets. Obviously, people that hide in closets are usually found all the time anyway. <laughs> I, I generally avoid them. Just don't go in there. But yeah, it seems like a counter to Iron Will whenever you're injured and, uh, you know, trying not to make the sounds of death that you're dying. And it seems that she's going to be able to, you know, be able to uh, hear a little bit better. Whether or not that's going to be a viable perk, I don't know. It, I, I personally wouldn't be using it over the amount of other things that we have. Iron Grasp, Deer Stalker, A Nurse's Call, Brutal Strength, Fies, and obviously, No One Escapes Death, aka Noet. 
Uh, I just don't see that really fitting in there anywhere. Compared to the killers that we have now, uh, at first glance, everybody's kind of has the same opinion. She looks super overpowered. She does. She does. She looks. She looks like how they intended killers to be. Scary as fuck. It looks like she's completely able to counter infinites. She can travel distance very quickly. The only problem in uh, her blink is that you have to be in a straight line. Now, with that being said, as a survivor running Spine Chill, this is going to be excellent for you. Now, I, I say that Spine Chill would probably be more dominant than Premonition because if she has to go in a straight line, as you can see throughout multiple times in the trailer, your Spine Chill is going to stay active. It's not going to be like how the other killers can walk backwards towards a generator or side strafe towards a uh, generator. She actually has to, if she wants to blink to it and close in on you quickly, that spine chill is going to register. Now, whether it be a full two seconds or a handful of seconds, two to five, one to five, that spine chill is going to stay lit. Now, premonition, on the other hand, probably wouldn't be as useful in the sense that if she's coming towards you, your spine chill would be lit, correct? Now, premonition does give you the idea of where she is, which is great, but there's a 30 second cooldown on that. Spine chill is infinite. So she could be blinking past you towards somebody else and then your premonition goes off. Well, what if she decides to turn around and come towards your direction in within that 29 second window where you don't have premonition? That blink is going to absolutely tear people to pieces. She's going to be able to close in on you so quickly. And that could be a tactic where they fake you out. You know, the nurse in general uh, just looks like a very, very sneaky, sneaky monster. Getting into Nia, the balance landing um, is, you know, as Nia falls long distances out of windows from two-story buildings, etc., etc., she does not lose her balance. Well, I've heard testimonies from someone that works on the game uh, that they're actually going to be nerfing the time that it takes you to recover as a survivor without balance landing when falling out of windows. So if that's the case, this perk may be okay. If what they say is true, then let's say you are not running balance landing and you jump out of a window and a killer is chasing you with the, the stun that you're going to uh, somewhat obtain from jumping out, the killer should be able to catch you. If that is true, balance landing could save you in those cases. Whether or not that's a full-time perk you want to run, my first impression is no. We still have sprint, we still have saboteur, spine chill, premonition, self-heal, small game, lightweight, Calm Spirit, we have so many other perks that are actually viable right now. Whether or not they get buffed down the road, we'll see. Pre-impressions, you know, I can't speak too soon because the game could change mildly. Um, urban evasion, evasion, excuse me. Nia's walking, walking speed and crouch is increased. I could see this being extremely good in some, you know, maps like Sheltered Woods, where your whole, the whole game, aside from people who know how to juke well or use pallets well or run to your almighty infinite, Shelter Woods is not really one of those places. Now, the increased crouch speed can help you stay aligned from a killer behind a tree. Staying crouched in the tall grass and being able to move around that tree quickly, left to right, maybe move back another tree without them being able to creep up on you and you not being able to necessarily get around the tree to keep yourself, you know, in a line from them behind the actual uh, object, whether it be a tree or a wall, etc., etc. We'll see. I think the perk would be better, honestly, if they increased her walking speed in general rather than just the crouch. It's, it's hard to say, but around trees and objects that you want to stay hidden, you don't actually want to be found, it could be okay. You know, if obviously if you don't have an amazing build like myself, I run Spine Chill, Self Care, Saboteur, and Sprint. If I'm feeling in a, in a very heroic mood, sometimes I'll throw on Will Make It with a med kit so that I'm able to get people from basements, heal them before the killer gets back down there, and then we can both get out. But Urban Invasion, 6 of 10 usefulness, I'd say. Balance Landing, 2 or 3 out of 10. Now, on to our final perk, Streetwise. Nia's consumption rate of items is reduced, making everything last a bit longer. Now, the percentage or amount that it's actually going to increase the item's duration with has got to be vast, or it's not going to be worth replacing, say, Streetwise for self-care and running a med kit. So, we already have self-care, which is infinite, 50% speed. Now, if we run Streetwise with a med kit, you get med kit speed already, and say you throw on medical scissors for increased speed. Now, if we've got increased speed on a med kit and we're running streetwise, let's say it adds 30 charges. That could be okay. That would actually be better than just self heal, in the sense that it will be faster healing and you will get enough of it so that you could probably heal yourself three or four times. 
that would be actually pretty good. It's going to depend on how many items you have, the add-ons that you have to spare, and if you're able, actually able to make a good item build. So if, for instance, if you ran a toolbox with a hacksaw and maybe a wire spool with Streetwise, now you're getting 30 extra charges from the wire spool, and then you say get another 30 from Streetwise, the toolbox with a hacksaw is incredibly fast. You could stab multiple hooks at a very, very accelerated speeds, multiple traps in about three seconds, uh, assuming there's not strong traps. It could be good. It could be really good. It's really just dependent on how much the buff is and what items you have. So that's something we're going to see tomorrow. Pre-impressions that uh, where I'd fit um, Nia in, if that Streetwise perk is as good as I hope, as I'd mentioned, that would be an incredibly nice teachable. I would definitely not put her last place by any means. If that's a viable park, man. I mean, if you get the charges, we'll see. It's hard, hard to take away from, you know, my bae, Meg. That's, that's my bae right there. You know, I love Meg. Meg has Sprint, which is one of my favorite utensils in the game. So streetwise, I don't know if that's gonna trump it for me. I hope that it's not buggy. Let's hope that the nurse doesn't glitch into walls and get stuck outside the map and teleport under staircases and shit. But, you know, I don't wanna speak too soon. Let's hope that the patch goes well. If you guys have any questions, comments, contradictory statements, opinions, leave them in the comments below. You know where to find me. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm out. Peace.